I'm Adam P. Kennedy. This is The Black Experience. Thank you for joining us. If you like what we're doing and want to become a part of our community, please like, subscribe, and hit the join button to support our channel. On this episode, I had the pleasure of talking to my mother, Theater Hall of Fame playwright Adrian Kennedy, about her encounters and impressions of the legendary actress Ruby Dee. This is the Black Experience for all. Jerry Friedman, who I had done the owl answers with at the public, worked in Cleveland at Great Lakes Theater. And he said to me, we're, we were going to commission you to write a play. And what would you like to write about? I told him I still was always struggling with the play about Ohio State. So I wrote Ohio State Murders for them. And he said, who do you think should be in it? And I said, do you think you could get Ruby D? And he said, I, of course, he knew Ruby, of course. He said, why don't you write to her? So he gave me her address. She lived in, of course, everyone knew that. I'd never been to that house. She'd been to Mount, she lived in Mount Vernon, not Mount Vernon. She lived outside, yes, it was up there by Mount Vernon. And he gave me her address and I wrote her a letter, handwritten note, and I got back in the mail this handwritten letter from Ruby D. She said, I would love to be in a play of yours. I would love to be in a play of yours. Well, I was surprised because I had seen Ruby in Raisin with Diana Sands. And Diana, Diana had told me that that group of people did not particularly like my plays. So she said, I, I can remember she said, beautiful handwriting. It was on this pale white paper. So she said, I'd like to come and see you. So Jerry said, you know, let her come and see you and we're, we're going to send her Ohio State Murders. So they sent her Ohio State Murders and she came to see me. It was probably one of the biggest days of my career. It was in the summer and I lived at 325 West 89th Street where you lived. And I was so excited, and I made this huge tuna fish salad. And I, I, I was very nervous. And I opened the door, and here this tiny woman, I hadn't realized how small she was. She was shorter than I am. And she, was, she came running up the stairs, and she had on gold shoes, and a, a blouse that was shiny and like some sort of trousers. And she was so excited. She was like a child. She said, I'm so excited. I'm so excited to, 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 to do this with you. And, she, and so we sat down at the table by the window and she said, I want you to do something for me. I want you to read Ohio State Murders to me. I said, the whole play? She said, yes, I want you to read it to me because I want to hear what you emphasize. And she was so excited and, and, and she was so beautiful and, and she was so like, like she was in awe. She, Diana was like that also. Like she's in awe of you. And that, that's a gift a person has. Like she was so in awe of me. She was so in awe of the play. And so I, I read her a lot of it, and she just sat there and listened. And so, by this time, I feel I can actually talk to her. This is not a person who is superior, you know, this is a person who you can actually talk to. So I gave her my tuna fish salad, and she acted as if that was the only tuna fish salad she'd ever had in her whole life. She just, this is so good, this is, this is so wonderful. So I'd re I read her the play, we had tuna fish salad. And she says, what are we having for dessert? I said, well, I, I, I don't know, I got kind of a little nervous again. She said, well, I'd like to have some ice cream, I'll go get it. She jumps up, 
she has these gold high heel shoes. And she ran down the stairs. You know, as you know, we lived on the top floor, second to the top floor. And she brought back this all this ice cream. And she was just so, she said, I'm so happy to be in this play. I love this play. And I was just so taken with this energy and this awe that she had. I just fell in love with her. And we sat down on the couch. We talked for a few minutes. And she said, I'm going to talk to Aussie because I want him to get, yes, she says, I'm going to get Quincy. I want Ozzy to get Quincy to help me make this into a movie. She said, and she said, I could, I'll, I'll look, I could play here. I could play Suzanne Alexander when she's young. I could get a, a, a mask or so, you know, I could do something to my hair and get a wig. And then I could play her when she was older. And she was so excited. And I was just so taken with Ruby. I was just utterly taken with her. She wasn't anything like I had expected. And when we went to Cleveland, what stands out about Cleveland when we rehearsed Ohio State Murders at Great Lakes, she was, she always listened so carefully to Jerry Friedman. She was not, you know, this I know it all actress. She always listened very carefully and she always was shy and listened carefully. And I, I was just so taken with that. She never acted like she was Ruby D. And she asked me, would I like to come to dinner? And she was staying at something called the Radisson in Cleveland. I was, of course, living at home with my mother. And she said, I'd like to make a dinner for you. I went up this, to the Radisson and she made collard greens. She, she made them herself. She made collard greens and Ozzie was there and the three of us had this dinner of collard greens. And we're just, they're just normal people. <laughs> I, 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 just, I, I just couldn't get over that. They're just normal people and she's cooking the dinner and talking. And I, I'll never forget that. I'll never, ever forget that. So she said, where do you live? I said, well, I live with my mother, right? When I'm in Cleveland, of course. So she said, I'd like to meet your mother. When we had the dinner with mother, she's, you know, she's very, it's a quality. I don't know what that is, you know, but she treated my mother as if my mother were a very special person. And she, you know, in the apartment, and she just treated her with such grace. I don't, I don't know. It's a quality that she had. And I'm sure it played a huge role in her, her success, her life. And Ozzie came before the lunch was over. I just was so taken with her. And when she did the play, then she's someone else. Because she, she had that voice and those eyes. And then what moment she walked onto the stage, she was someone else. And I just, I thought she was the most wonderful person I ever met. I think she was the great, she was great. She was great like Helen Hayes and Catherine Cornell. Uh -huh. She was, she's a great actress. She, she I think she limited herself sometimes because she did many things with her husband. And, but she, you know, it's Catherine Cornell, Helen Hayes, those, 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 those are the stage women. She was a stage actress, basically, but certainly she was in lots of movies. As you know, she was also in Raisin, the movie Raisin. Is there anyone today, black, white, yellow, brown, who sort of reminds you of Ruby? No, no, she was singular. You know, she's like Meryl Streep. She was all in the class, all by herself. No one had, like Meryl Streep, all these people creating role after role after role for her. 
So color still is limiting those women in their greatness. Dear mother, well, here we are. I'm uh, sitting in this nice hotel room next door to the Schubert Theater alone. Wednesday night, the curtain goes up at 8 p.m. The actors are very good, and the director is a very talented man, so if A Raisin in the Sun is a poor show, I won't have a soul to blame but your youngest daughter. Well, well, thank you for sharing those wonderful stories. Is there anything else you want to add about Ruby D? She was small. I'm 5'1". She's about five, she's about an inch shorter than I was. So I'm, I, I can look down on her, <laughs> which is amazing. Which to me, after, you know, when you see a person on the screen, when you see them on the stage, they have that voice and those eyes, you know, and they, you, it's just it, probably meeting her and talking to her and getting her letter and her running up the steps in those gold shoes and being so excited over the tuna fish salad. See, that, that's a gift. She had a gift. She made it seem like that was the greatest tuna fish salad she'd ever had her entire life. Don't you think that's a gift? Maybe it was. <laughs> no, I don't think so. But I mean, don't you, you, you know, what, what, what do you think that gift is? It's a gift when people can do that. No, I think some people have an inherent ability to make other people feel special. Yes. And very few people have that ability. Very few people have that ability. So that's uh, that's fantastic, especially someone who is who is obviously extremely successful. If you like what you hear at The Black Experience, please consider clicking on the join button to support our nonprofit. I'm Adam P. Kennedy. Thank you for joining us. This is The Black Experience for all.